Okay, to start this demo off, let's look at our topology in the Cisco Modeling Labs. The reason why I'm using this uh, particular modeling simulator is because I needed layer two switching. And as you can see, we have a topology that has a leaf and spine architecture. And then we have some, some additional switches daisy chained off the leaf, the leaf nodes themselves. So um, one of them, switch four, is currently not turned on. So if we, if we go through this exercise to map this existing topology, then because LLDP is the source of information, the source of truth for these connect connections in between the switches, and um, this particular switch is turned off, then it should not be a part of our diagram. So at this point in time, we'll go ahead and we'll take a look here. Let me bring up the repo. So in the repository, and note that um, in the readme instructions, it will have um, links to this. And one of the things that you're going to want to do if you want to replicate what we're doing in this demonstration is you're going to want to fork this repo so that you can make changes to the repository. Ultimately, what's happening here is we're reading in information from the repo in terms of Ansible Automation Controller, uh, having access to particular playbooks and roles. Right, so this is where our playbooks are and um, our roles in this particular folder. And as we use that content, we're updating graphic files. So the thing that is important here to understand is that GraphViz is a, you know, a, a Python application that I've implemented in an execution environment. Um, and that's where we have our collections for the devices. In this case, um, Cisco iOS XE devices, the switches, um, as well as any other Python um, related applications, modules, plugins, um, those are installed as well. So in the readme, it, it mentions some dependencies. So there is a bind up file for graphids itself for the installation. And once that's available on the EE, as we run these playbooks effectively, we're creating, um, you know, using dot commands with graphids, we're creating a new map and that map is being updated into our repository. Hence, we need to be able to write to our repository. When you fork a repository, then that gives you access from your account to make changes. So you can read and write to that repo and push changes back. And that's ultimately what we need to have here. So the network maps folder currently is empty. So um, keep an eye on this, as well as the fact that we were missing um, switch four from our topology. So we should not see that um, as we run through this iteration of the playbooks and the roles. So I'm going to go ahead and launch this template and you'll see the playbooks in action. The first thing is that we pull in um, for our project the source control. So that's what happened here. It's reading in that same repo that I just mentioned. And then we're running the playbook. Right, so there was an exercise of gathering facts to learn the state of LLDP, and then um, in the roles, we're actually interacting um, with GraphViz to create that dot data, which ultimately creates these LLDP topology.png files. So, this is the one that we currently created, and you'll notice it has a timestamp, right? So, that's how we know which diagram we're looking at, and that's a good point for version control, we want to timestamp these files so we can go back in time and look at previous maps and understand where we are. So at this point in time, if I refresh the repo to the left, we have the file that we just created. This is our current topology that does not include switch four. So if we were to add a switch into our um, topology and LLDP doing its thing as a network function, we should see that new switch um, as it's enabled. So let's go and um, emulate that in CML. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this switch on. And when that switch is up and running, it will be discovered by switch two with LLDP. And then ultimately we should see that change the next iteration of running our network map as code. So I'll go ahead back over here and we'll go ahead and launch our GraphViz playbook from the job template and let that run. And we'll go ahead and bring our repo up over here. 
All right, so here we, we just publish um, some changes, and if we go back into here, we can see we have this new timestamp. And if I go back um, into my network maps folder, we can see now we have two files. So we had the one from two minutes ago where we were missing switch four, and then now we have the current um, configuration where we should actually see that in our topology. And we do. So that's it. I mean, that's, that's a, a quick and easy network map. I'm going to create a, another demo where we're going to add to this. So right now we're just looking at the campus um, or data center environment, the layer two switching environment, in this case more campus because these are Catalyst switches, iOS XE switches. Uh, what I'd like to do next, and as a follow-up to this, is I'm going to add the ability to look at OSPF neighbors um, and or BGP peers, right? And then we can connect um, topologies together, layer two um, in layer three campus across the WAN and continue to build on our topology diagrams, you know, adding to what we're building in GraphViz. And again, this is just an open source way of building network maps. Ansible has integrations to all sorts of other tools as well. And perhaps I'll create some examples that show some of the like vendor solutions that we work very easily with um, in addition to some of these open source things. But it's nice to know about the open source um, for, you know, definitely for, for free and, you know, and proven, you know, solutions like GraphViz that people have been using for a long time. And all we're doing is modifying them a bit so that we're making them available as code and to be able to, you know, version control certain um, aspects of them by using um, a repository, in this case, a Git repository. I'll talk to you on the next one. Take care.